Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's Arena Time. Well, this deck has held up pretty well in the last couple videos. It's had pretty nice, sort of evenly distributed draws, as far as I can tell. I've been getting a variety of some of my direct damage, some of my cheap guys, some of my expensive guys by the time we get to the expensive guys point, which is good, because that's what they're for. It's been working out pretty darn well, which does make me suspicious, because that usually doesn't hold up. But I also have to point out, I don't... I'm not sure how well some of my opponents have been playing that Hunter last time. I'd have to really look at it again, because maybe the timing just didn't work out, like when he drew certain cards, but it sure seemed like he was not playing his deck to the optimal efficiency. I will fight with honor for Doomhammer. I don't know. So we have different cards this time. Do I want to keep the early game abuse of Sergeant? Probably the Earth Shock. I guess we're going to keep all this stuff. Probably dumb. I'm just worried that I will get even more expensive stuff if I pitch the Feral Spirit. Like, I'd like to pitch the Feral Spirit and get a non-overload, three or three cost or less type of thing. I don't think I got that choice. What Part of the question is, do I put out the Abusive Sergeant first because it's hard for Paladins to deal with that stuff? But saving it to boost a totem would also be nice. I think I've got to put him out in case he puts out an aggressive, like, good unit first turn with his coin. Although in practice, putting him out guarantees that he's not going to put out one of those. He'll put out something you can beat this, which would be almost anything. Okay, Taunt Totem would be fantastic, because this guy can't get through it in one turn, and it would protect my 2-1. But chances are low. Yeah. Suffer my wrath, my two damage wrath, and then you can trade him for him. Yay. Don't think this is going to work out great for a start, but I haven't learned much yet. Interesting. So I could hex him. Seems ex hexessive. Someone might say. Could play the Feral Spirit, but that'll lock out two of my mana. Next turn I would only have two mana. I don't like that. I think I'm leaning towards Scarlet Crusader and hit this guy for one. I don't like the preemptive hitting for one type plays, but... I don't know. I guess the Paladin is probably not that important. I probably should have just left it as a 1-1, one -one, but he might fail and like kill her anyway. And by her, I meant himself. Killed her bubble. So that worked out pretty well for me in practice. Um, could do the Feral Spirit now. I wouldn't have enough mana for him next turn. But uh, I think I'm just going to be trading her for that and playing the Spider Tank. And I think that's okay. I wonder. I mean, I could play the Feral, feral Spirit. Earthshock this guy. He would be down to two hit points, so he would only take out one Feral Spirit. And he wouldn't have taunt, so she could get through and still be alive. That's very interesting. Next turn I would have three mana, so I could still do either of these. You know what? Maybe I'm going to try that. I really shouldn't stick around this much, but... Yeah, I'm sure that's a waste, sort of, but... It looks like it has potential. Even if I get Consecrated... Because, again, this, is, this Paladin is not me, so he may have Consecrated in the arena. But these guys have three hit points, so it wouldn't obliterate them. Okay, we've got a lot of anti-weapon tech so far. That's fine, though. Now, I could hex this guy to get rid of his bubble. I could just attack him to get rid of his bubble, but then he can kill through and he'd be able to kill all my stuff, which would be unfortunate. By then I'll have more stuff. I, I can't imagine it's worth hexing that, though. <sighs> do I pop the bubble is the question. Because I could just attack and do more damage, force him to spend more attacks to take this guy out. There's not really more attacks, though, because this guy will just take him out. So, yeah, no, we're going to get rid of the bubble. I think I'm just going to go for damage, though. I don't want to force the trades because I'm sitting on a Frostwolf Warlord. I like 
to preserve the chance that I have another guy alive, make him spend his attacks on it. But it can totally backfire. Now if he consecrates, it'll be bad. Consecrate, shield bot, and then hit me for three, and he would have total board control. It would be unpleasant. Okay, so far so predictable. Ah, oh, that sucks. Stupid amazing direwolves. I can still drop a 5-5 Frostwolf, which is fine. Or I could make a totem... Make a 4-3. Which, I guess if she kills him, that would be okay. Yeah, I think just having a 5-5 five five is probably better. And we're going to kill that, because we don't want him taking advantage of that. That'd be leaving a lot of damage on the table to try to soften him up. Like, the more damage they have, the more chance they have that they can kill this without spending a lot of effort. Whereas the hope is that right now he can't kill this without spending a lot of effort. He could Blessing of Kings, or possibly just not kill him this round. I wonder. If he doesn't kill him, then I can go Totem, Bigger Warlord. This is only a two-star general. Let's see if we can whip out a four-star. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me! That's a little ugly. I'd have to take time out to hex that guy. Lava burst doesn't do it, so yeah, probably gonna take time out to hex him. But I can still go this. No, I can't do that. And oh, that's very annoying. All right. Well, I can't. I can't have him being out there. This, because I'll play my big warlord, and then he'll get killed by that. So, that's to that. Let's uh, do the damage. Then hex him. And then, kind of want to just do the totem, but I'm gonna do the blade master. More stuff on the table. The totem won't be able to break a frog, whereas Blade Master theoretically can. So Paladin can have a lot of strong late game cards. That guy's also fairly strong. Wow, he just played like the Untargetable Legion all of a sudden, and he softened him up enough for that guy. Alright. So do I have lethal? I'm assuming no. Because I could blow that up. Okay. But basically kill it, hit for 5, Lava Burst, that's 10, 11 if I got super lucky on this. It's still not going to be death, so we're not doing that. I'm going to kill this. It's got to happen. And then I can only play one thing plus him. So I guess it's going to be this guy, because he's going to draw out some of the like killing. Yeah, I'd kind of like it to be a totem. A healing totem would have been awesome, but I can't... It's too... Unreliable. Well, I didn't have a lot of strong late game cards, a lot of horrible bad things he could do to me if he had the right cards, but I'm hoping that I can just brute force him down. Down to five, basically, and then Lava Burst for the win. That would be great. So Bears is a little bit of a stall, but he's got to kill a lot of my stuff for that bear to hold up. Um, right, that means that this guy can kill him instead of having to use the big guy. Although, that doesn't make that much difference. This means he takes a little bit less damage. Mostly it's having this out. That's, that's game, though. First thought is Lava Burst this out of the way, but then I can only hit for 11. Whereas, if this guy trades for that, I mean, the long term doesn't matter, because I'm going to have one, so... Let's uh, make a totem first, just in case. Because why not? Your turn to bleed. You have mana for this? Yeah. Well, bam. All right. So. All the terrible and fearsome Paladin cards didn't come out. It's more like one of my Paladin decks. Yeah. He didn't get a Consecrate. 
and equality. No, no avenging wrath. No like crazy true silver swords. No like crazy legendaries or anything. Just a paladin who wasn't getting the stuff he needed. Maybe he had some of that stuff in his deck, but it didn't come up, and he got screwed. Who do we got? One. Oh, a mage. Not ideal, but we'll see what we can do. Um, not a great starting hand. We're pitching him. I guess we're keeping the sergeant because castable, even though he's really sad against the mage. Really. Nice job there. So, do I bother playing him at this stage? I think the answer is still yes. Gotta waste her time killing him. If she wants to coin and shoot him, then she used her coin and she's not using it to get ahead of my otherwise slow hand. This gives her that problem. If she has like a knife juggler or whatever, like a any kind of 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two goodness, she's not going to want to play it. Ooh. Well, I was just going to make a totem. Now this thing is going to get blown up, but I got to try it. She didn't blow him up. She maybe just wanted to save her coin and take something else out. And, yeah, but I don't know. At least if she frostbolts this, I can keep hitting for damage and she will still have nothing on the table. If she doesn't have a frostbolt, then this might make her sad. I don't know. It's going to make her sad. Not as sad as if I had the uh, Rockbiter weapon, which I totally do not have, but that's uh, okay. Because now, we're without those guys dead, turning into a bit of a curve hand, we've got the bears to protect it from crocodiles. That's how nature works. I'm sure she's got some kind of plan. No, her plan is just play regular stuff, unless... Oh, what has she got now? Zombie Chow. Okay, well, he's a pretty good play because she's not doing any damage to me. But, like, craziness. I can Earth Shock him. That's always fun. Can't play anything too super good right now. I'm not going to use the Crackle. So let's let's get a Totem first, see where it is, and then decide who to Earth Shock. The answer is him. It's even a Healing Totem for me. So nice. We are going to, yeah, Earth Shock this guy. Kill him. So the bear is going to get... I, I was thinking the bear has to kill him to keep this alive, but actually the bear is going to get healed for one by the healing totem, so she can't just shoot this and then kill him. So I can actually go for the damage. For the crazy healing totem this. Whee! Yeah. I mean... Whenever I'm predicting what they're going to do, it's generally based on, this is the board status. I don't know what card she has in her hand. Obviously, she can change this arrangement, killing this some other way, killing this some other way. There's like a million things she could do. But this situation is looking pretty dire for her because she's at 11 and she has 4 mana. What to do? What to do? She just got, like, screwed with her hand. If she had him in her starting hand, she would have been doing much better. So what is your four mana going to do to stop this? you got to get rid of this guy. He's, like, killing you. If you don't kill him right now, I could theoretically crackle her to death. I mean, I won't, because I could also play one of these guys, and it'd be awesome. But there is a 50-50 chance I could just kill her with the crackle. If I made a totem with this... And if it came up as spell damage totem, then my damage would be 4 to 7. She's I'm, I'm attacking with this either way. So, she is at 5. At that point, it would probably be worth the gamble. The problem is, if I lose the gamble, it sucks. That's the problem. So, I think the Feral Spear is actually my best chance of victory. I'm going to make the totem anyway, but I'm not actually going to try and crackle her down. Use it as more of a guarantee. So there's a 3 out of 4 chance that I win if I do this. But, if it doesn't kill her, 
things can go all kinds of wrong, whereas the Feral Spirits are pretty safe. She's not going to be, like, flame striking anytime soon. We're just, the game's going too fast for that. This is a giant army of death, and if she takes even two damage, assuming this dies, she, I need to do two damage to her or one damage with this alive to guarantee kill her. I don't like the one in four chance because I think, yeah, if I had not, if I had failed that one in four chance, I think my board status would have been really bad. I would have been setting myself up for her to get a comeback. But as it stands, five wins, no losses. So, wow. We just have to see what happens next time. Please click the legendary like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demonac Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.